how to steer clear of the top 10 HIPAA violations, stay out of trouble, and not get fined. First of all, the biggest menacing challenge about HIPAA these days is this, not knowing where it fits into an audit-proof compliance program, or how it can seriously affect you. But first, let me tell you what a compliance program isn't. A compliance program is more than just having an old compliance manual in your office gathering dust. Simply having a compliance program or a book about compliance programs could substantially harm you more than you think. The problem with a flagrantly unkept manual shows that you've got some knowledge of what you should be doing, but you've haphazardly chosen not to do it. It could be interpreted by authorities as knowingly and willfully violating several laws. So who cares about HIPAA? That's what I used to think, and that probably makes me just like you. But understand this one thing, as a clinic director, a clinic chiropractor, or a wellness coordinator, we're under the ubiquitous umbrella considered a covered entity. It's as bluntly as simple as that. Now, wouldn't it be great if there weren't any hackers? But how about lost devices? Are they ever returned intact? And what if every employee always followed every single rule? Unfortunately, this isn't quite the case. So starting off in 2019, I thought it would be a great time to talk about the everyday top 10 most common HIPAA violations and provide tips for avoiding them. So, to stay off the OIG's radar, let's begin with the first five. One, stolen or missing devices. We often hear about stolen electronic gadgets, such as laptops, tablets, thumb drives, and smartphones. Even though this can occur simply because it's misplaced, the incident should be logged and reported. Either lost or stolen, people compound the problem by not encrypting and password protecting these devices. Encryption is technically not required by HIPAA, but it is considered a good way to have a valid get out of jail free card. Technically, encryption is considered addressable under HIPAA. The thing is, there's rarely a situation when a system shouldn't be encrypted. According to the Federal Register, encryption and destruction are the only two methods for rendering protected health information, unusable, unreadable, or indecipherable to unauthorized individuals, also known as secured. This makes them exempt from the obligations of notification to the Office of Civil Rights when a breach does occur. According to Susan McAndrew, OCR's Deputy Director of Health Information Privacy, she says, Covered entities and business associates must understand one thing. Mobile device security is their obligation. Our message to these organizations is simple. Encryption is your best defense against these incidents. Number two, hacking. 23% of HIPAA breaches come in the form of an IT incident. Theft, improper disposal, or unauthorized access and disclosure. When discovered, this can be in the form of missing desktop computers, laptops, electronic medical records, emails, phone numbers, or addresses, either kept on paper, hard drives, or on thumb drives. It doesn't always have to be an, an elaborate scheme because hackers are often looking for the path of least resistance and theft can be done in many ways. Some popular methods are by exploiting a user profile with a weak password resulting in the presence of malware, trojans, or a virus. There are a few easy ways to make sure your systems are less vulnerable to hacking. Update all passwords quarterly. Cracking weak passwords is one of the easiest ways to hack a system. Turn on software firewalls in your operating system. Install malware scanning software and routinely update. Number three, team member dishonesty. In the past few years, everything from vendors to volunteers have been stealing PHI, then using it for reasons not originally authorized, or simply team members accessing it out of curiosity, 
That too is a HIPAA violation. Whatever the reason, accessing files that you're not allowed to see is wrong. Using or selling PHI for personal gain is illegal and you are subject to federal fines and prison time. Number four, improper disposal. Even something as simple as the photocopier and scanner could be the cause of the next HIPAA violation. Many multifunction photocopiers default to save copies on their hard drive. If you dispose of a copier or return it to a leasing company if leased, without first properly wiping the drive clean or removing it, you may have a HIPAA violation on your hands. Any information, either digital or paper, needs to be shredded or destroyed so that others cannot access it. There's a saying, put a nail in it. By putting a nail right through the middle of an old hard drive or thumb drive ensures it can't be recovered. Also, be sure to wipe all data from phones and mobile devices before exchanging them or upgrading with a newer model. Number five, third party disclosure. Improper disclosure of PHI to third parties finishes out part one of the top 10 HIPAA violations. If you want part two to discover more about unapproved release, encryption, insufficient training, loose records, and other loudmouth persons, reply with, I want six through 10 in the subject line. Lastly, most businesses have business associates and business associate subcontractors. And just like you, these third parties are equally responsible for protecting PHI. Understanding the common agency provision in the HIPAA omnibus ruling is important because it holds your business associates and their subcontractors to the same strict privacy and security compliance standards required of covered entities as you are. And as clinic director, clinic chiropractor, or wellness coordinator, you're ultimately responsible for them and what they do with the information they have access to. Does Office Depot, Alhambra Water, or UPS have compliance plans? Do we have them sign those required business associate agreements? If you don't have a business associate agreement in place, whether PHI is ever accessible or not, you have a potential HIPAA breach on your hands. I'm Dr. Meltz, Clinic Director of the Joint Renaissance Creek in Roseville, California.